Many scientists believe that man never saw a dinosaur, that they're separated from man by 100 million years, or at least 65 million years. There are, however, many scientists who disagree with that based on the empirical evidence. And there is a great deal of evidence that man and dinosaur did exist at the same time. We want to look at some of that evidence this morning, especially what we find in Acumbaro, Mexico. This is an area where we find ceramic dinosaurs from over 3,000 years ago that were excavated in the early 1900s. It's very obvious that these ceramic figurines are of dinosaurs. There are a number of different styles and materials that were used in making them. This is down in Mexico in the central highlands in the state of Guanajuato in the city of Acumbro. This is a very interesting colonial city with a, a rich history. And in this brochure that advertises the city, we're told that there we find the Chipicoro culture, which was uh, over 3,200 years ago. And it is from that culture that we find these figurines. The culture was actually uh, defined and discovered, or co-discoverer, uh, Waldemar Yulsrud, who immigrated from Germany uh, to Mexico in the uh, early 1900s. He was actually escaping what he saw developing uh, in uh, Germany at that time that he did not appreciate and wanted his boys away from that. And to escape Nazi Germany, came to Mexico. He was a trained archaeologist and uh, became very famous for his work here in Mexico. Uh, and certainly well known in the city. This is the museum that houses most of the Chipicoro figurines and uh, artifacts and is the museum of the Chipicoro culture in the city. Chipicoro, just about eight uh, kilometers north of Acambaro in the same vicinity. Uh, in the early 1900s, uh, Waldemar Yulsrud was uh, a prominent resident here of the city and was riding horseback one morning out uh, in the outskirts of town near El Toro. This is a mountain uh, there at the, uh, the edge of the city. And at the base, uh, we find a number of uh, archaeological excavations. He was riding along an irrigation ditch and saw some of the figurines sticking out, stopped and uh, excavated them, and from that found uh, thousands of these and ultimately collected over 30,000, which filled his house. He was uh, consumed with his interest in this culture and especially the dinosaur figurines. This is the house as it appears today. It's been turned into a hardware store, but it's a large mansion that takes up most of a city block. Charles Hapgood uh, actually brought my attention to this. Uh, he's professor of history, or was professor of history and anthropology at the University of New Hampshire. He is now deceased. But he had heard about these and came down to Mexico to investigate. And these are photographs that were taken when he was investigating in the early 50s. And from these photographs, you can see that obviously they're strange creatures, but uh, especially here in the foreground, you see obviously di dinosauran features. And these were from the uh, collection uh, that had been amassed by Waldemir Yulsrud over a number of years while he was collecting these. Uh, Hapgood enlisted the aid of Earl Stanley Gardner, who was uh, a friend, uh, obviously uh, very good at investigating mysteries. He was a criminologist. He uh, had been uh, district attorney in the uh, county of Ventura in California for over 30 years and, of course, had written uh, the Perry Mason stories. And he's the author of uh, those famous TV movies as well as many, many books. He's referred to on the website that describes him as the world's most famous lawyer. He wrote a book about this mystery called The Host with the Big Hat, the same author that wrote Perry Mason described this mystery and his investigation of it. Uh, obviously, it's controversial uh, because it describes the coexistence of humans and dinosaurs, and some scientists would just dismiss it outright because of the philosophical implications. 
not because of the actual evidence. This would fly in the face of evolutionary theory, and so no matter who it is or how much evidence, they're not going to accept it. Here we see a picture of Professor Hapgood, Earl Stanley Gardner, together with Carlos Yulesrud, who was the son of Waldemir Yulesrud, and they worked together to try to solve this mystery and to prove that uh, the father, Waldemir Yulesrud, was not the one who manufactured these, which is what the critics were saying. 33,000 figurines, <laughs> a variety of styles and materials, uh, just mind-boggling array, uh, all from one individual was the, I think, ridiculous claim. But Earl Stanley Gardner was invest, uh, enlisted to help uh, investigate this and approve it. And here we see him looking closely at some of these figurines. And he has pictures of them in his book. Here is one of the pictures from his book. And we notice the title, which says that dinosaurs do appear abundantly throughout the collection. He interviewed at length Carlos, the son of Waldemar Yulesrud, who had uh, gone out with his father to excavate on a number of occasions and had found numbers of these things uh, while he was uh, working with his father. He also uh, here is seen interviewing uh, Professor Hapgood, and the two of them worked together. And notice in his book the description of the work that was done to refute the idea that uh, Waldemar Yulesrud was the author, the manufacturer, the source of <coughs> these dinosaur figurines. Uh, here, quoting from Earl Stanley Gardner, Professor Hapgood lay awake at night trying to devise new tests, new places to dig. He even went to a road which had apparently been undisturbed for many years, and by many years he's referring to hundreds of years. He dug under the road with permission from the government and sure enough, found the Yulesrud type figurines under the road. He continues saying, in many places in Mexico, boundary lines between fields are marked by stone walls, which are hundreds of years old. And he goes on to describe excavation under these walls, where again, they found examples of the Yulesrud type figurines, including dinosaurs. And then an amazing, <laughs> just ingenious, uh, test was proposed uh, together with the chief of police of Acambaro. Uh, his house had been built some 50 years before Jules Rudd immigrated from Germany. It was one of the original houses. Adobe brick was the construction material. He said, let's dig under the house of the police chief, under the living room floor. And if these figurines are found there, then obviously Jules Rudd would not be the source of this material. And so they did that. Here we see the mayor uh, standing in attention. He also conducted a three-month investigation into the possibility that maybe someone had manufactured these, questioning people throughout the area uh, for any knowledge of uh, anyone manufacturing such figurines. When you fire them, uh, it would be known. Here we see a brick factory right at the base of El Toro where many of them were found. When you fire the brick, you make smoke. And uh, especially when you're burning wood, which would be the source of the fire, the material to, to fire them. And uh, you can't do this without being known. And in a three-month investigation, the police chief found no evidence that they had been manufactured recently. In uh, the book, Host with the Big Hat, Earl Stanley Gardner pictures here uh, a diagram of the police chief's house. And there under the floor, uh, it's pointed out that 43 pieces of the Yules Rudd uh, figurines were found under the floor of the police chief <laughs> of the city of Acambaro. Uh, and so, he continues to describe the investigation, saying, we had our cameras with us and took pictures, particularly of the weathered adobe bricks with the various fragments cemented firmly in place. These adobe bricks originated 50 years before Yules Rudd arrived on the scene. And in the brick embedded in them, you can see the pieces of the figurines and the pieces of pottery from the Chapicaro culture. He continues saying, we scratched around enough on the cut bank of Bull Hill or El Toro to see that the soil was liberally studded with artifacts. 
And then he has pictures of these artifacts in the brick. Uh, obviously, Yulzra didn't do this. And then concludes, uh, 